star of Politically Incorrect, Bill Maher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Welcome to the show, and uh, we have a terrific show. We have Frank Ajay, Elizabeth Wurzel, Alan Zweibel, and Neil Parrott of Rush. So, I got all those names right, and that was not easy. Well, I guess you're all very excited about the midterm elections. <laughs> People usually are. There's, only, there's less than a week to go, and it's getting really ugly out there because, you know, the Democrats, they stand to lose a lot. So they're, they're getting desperate. They're, they're, you know, did you see down in Florida the scare tactics they're using on senior citizens? They say now they're telling the seniors that if the Republicans get in, they're going to cut Social Security, and they may cancel Matlock. So that, <laughs> that hits them where they live. That's, Now, uh, sports fans will be happy to hear that there is a new professional baseball league yeah, on the way. Did you see that? Right? New owners, and they say they hope they, uh, they can attract uh, absolute professional baseball talent, and they fully expect that in a year the league will be up and striking. So. <laughs> now, oh, please, no. That's, that's, uh, no one, no, no one wants pity applause. <laughs> well, not no one. I do. But, I mean, most people with dignity don't. Now, this was ugly, and I know you want to hear about it. West Point. How many, anybody graduated? I mean, it used to be such a place of honor. And now the cadets were found fondling <laughs> cheerleaders on the parade grounds. I, I take a dim view of activities like that. And apparently the Army, uh, you know, when they talk about a great place to start now, that they mean second base. You know, that's... <laughs> Now, those, those of you who were foolish enough to miss this show on Tuesday may have been watching uh, NYPD Blue, which is uh, the... <laughs> that was unkind. That, well, what a cut. I, I assume you were taping this show. But the NYPD Blue had the, the last episode where David Caruso appeared, and uh, Dave, uh, Stephen Bochco, the executive producer, said he will not return, uh, but they have reserved the right uh, to use pictures of his ass for promotional purposes. So... <laughs> Out in California now, the, uh, the jury selection has begun for the Heidi Fleiss, no, not OJ, the Heidi... <laughs> Heidi Fleiss uh, case, they, and they're having trouble finding, you know, as usual, 12 people uh, who have never heard of, of Heidi Fleiss. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hell, that's L.A. They're going to have 12 people have... Uh, <laughs> but, um... But, um... <laughs> it was, uh, there was, a Boy, there was... Uh, there was a joke in there, but it probably wasn't as funny as that thing, huh? <laughs> No, Heidi Fleiss, she's quite a lady. She defended herself uh, out there by saying, for a girl to make it in L.A., they have to learn to stand on their own two knees. So, <laughs> all right, we always end on the boo. I don't know why, but anyway, stay tuned. It's all satirized for your protection. where everybody has something to plug. All right, first, the drummer and songwriter for the rock group Rush, the producer of this new album, Burning for Buddy, a tribute to Buddy Rich. Neil Peart is right here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, too. All right. A four-time Emmy Award winner as a writer on the original, the original, folks, Saturday Night Live. Not that crappy thing that's on now. <laughs> His most, his most recent book is Bu <laughs> Bunny Bunny, a collection of remembrances of his friend Gilda Radner. Mr. Alan Zweibel is right here. made his mark in both television and the movies. He's had roles in Car Wash and Hollywood Shuffle, as well as appearances on The Tonight Show and David Letterman. Nothing to plug, Mr. Frank Anajai. 
former contributor to the New Yorker and Rolling Stone. She's the author of this much-talked-about, truly, book called Prozac Nation. Elizabeth Wurzel, right here. Save that nation. Hey, thank you. Join the men in the parlor. Okay, panel, let's get to issue number one. Take a look at any bestsellers list, and I'm not including you on this uh, these days, and you'll find both the Nicole Simpson biography, right, and the Pope's new book, each of which dwells quite a bit on sex and, surprisingly, shopping for hats in Brentwood. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he wears big hats. Anyway... But these two successes, side by side, may simply mean that even the Pope has become pop culture, which may explain why he often quotes from the Rick James version of the Bible. <laughs> the point is, when the bestseller list is always topped by a comedian or Howard Stern, when the New Yorker magazine puts out a fashion issue, when supposedly respected network journalists pursue any lurid angle in the O.J. Simpson case in primetime news shows, it means that the people we used to look up to are now pandering down to us. In short, pop culture is now the, uh, the only culture we have. Uh, anybody think I'm right or wrong about that, Alan? I didn't understand it. I mean, uh, Franklin? <laughs> you didn't understand it? <laughs> Pull that back. No, I didn't. <laughs> We're saying people are getting stupid. Yeah, That's well, I, 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 I do think people are getting stupid, and I've noticed that. I've been, I was a comedian for 20 years, you know, and I've noticed... You've been, you've been doing this 20 years? Uh, yes, 22. Uh, 22, wow. you, Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm black, so I haven't aged that much, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah, but I've been around a long time. Means, what but what I have noticed is the, the attention spans have gotten shorter, and... Um, you mean when you're doing your own? Yes. That's the, that's, the, that's the biggest drop. In fact, I had to go to Australia to find, to hear people who would, young people, I mean, the older people my age and older, you know, the, the attention span is longer, but to find young people with a long attention span is really tough to find over here. And, and over there, they have that, you know, and I just think that, uh, um, hey, hit him now. <laughs> well, he, he, he's white. He looks young. Uh, Thank you. No. no, I have really noticed that. You know, I remember when I was in college, used to go here. I went to go here, Dick Gregory and Richard Pryor, and part of going to uh, hear a comedian was to be smart. You wanted to hear somebody very, very smart. Right. You know, that was part of it. Now, I think that you're just going for the joke, and you don't remember what uh, they're saying. So I do think we have gotten dumber. I've written on TV shows where clever lines never got on the show because they'd say, uh, no, the audience will have to think about that. Oh. You want to work here? <laughs> yeah, I would uh, mind that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, I mean, do you think Saturday Night Live, I mean, for example, you were there in the early days, you think that's a, a sign of the times with this? With this, I don't know. Um, I'm really curious, what, what, what's going on in Australia that they have the time to uh, <laughs> concentrate? And what, what, what? They only got four TV networks. I think that's what the difference I is. I see. So there's not an overload of stimuli. You yeah, only have these four. I, yeah, I would when we were growing up. Baywatch is on all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they will watch Baywatch. They will yeah. watch Baywatch. Australia. I, I've never known Australia to be the bastion of intellectualism. But it is. Yeah. Rupert Murdoch is from Australia. That's very true. You know, that's very true. But he also owns the Financial Times, the London Times in England. A lot of people don't know he owns the Trash newspaper in a lot of the cities and the highest, the most intellectual newspaper. Well, that, that's thing. an interesting point about the Everything. high and the low bra, which we will have to get to uh, when we return. <laughs> Sorry, Alan, we have to take a break. To be a member of our studio audience, call 212-512-8959. Okay, welcome back. And Alan, you were in uh, mid sentence and I had to cut you off. Yeah, I think that this is uh, purely evolutionary and it's uh, cyclical at the same time. I think that with the uh, with the new media, with the what stimuli were we coming about? in. Sorry, I have a bad intention. <laughs> So we're talking about the dumbing of America. The dumbing, dumbing of America. Technical? You think it's been this dumb before? I think um, it had to have been. I imagine cavemen were pretty uh, not real smart, don't you? <laughs> what they do all day? <laughs> well, I, well, yeah, right. 
I have, you're right. He's, he's right about all, that. All I'm saying but is that there's a new technology out there where, where stimuli and, and MTV and all this stuff that's coming through the screen bombards you. And I think you have no choice but for attention spans to be uh, to be reduced. However, how, how much smaller could they possibly get? I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer that the pendulum will come back this way and people will start relaxing a little bit. Otherwise, we're just going to spin around and take off. I know. I, I, I don't know how much more shallow the culture can get. I saw this movie, Loaded Weapon, the other day, and they were referencing Wayne's World. <laughs> As if that is a, a classical reference. Mm. Anyway, it's, uh, it's too facile to say that people are getting dumber, but the expectations facile. change. Yeah, facile. You know, oh. <laughs> too many syllables? Facile. I, facile ball. <laughs> yes. I've heard that. But really, just, you know, people's human nature or uh, human potential doesn't change that fast. But the expectations do, and, and the um, monitors by which we measure ourselves do, I think, too. So sometimes people look up to heroes and they want to be better and they want to be smarter. And they'll watch something that's maybe too smart for them, hoping that they'll get something from it and uh -huh. elevate themselves. Whereas if you watch something that's dumber than you are, it's, it's no threat. In fact, it's an, it's an affirmation. It's saying, well, beefs and butthead are so stupid, I'm not that stupid. Right. You know, yeah. and, and people do affirm Close. themselves with negative negative stereotypes. Well, yeah, does, it's, does, it's, does anyone watch Beavis and Butthead seriously? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 everybody thinks it's I ironic. I don't, I, I don't, but yeah. <laughs> I, that I just, is not an example. You're no, right. I, I mean, it's, it's all these things that people mm -hmm. choose as like signs that people are getting stupider. It's always a lot of smart people sitting around thinking that they're acting like stupid people watching them. I mean, it's a, you know, that's more of a concern is that, that, you know, there's that going on. Like there's that magazine, The Modern Review, which is smart people writing that really stupid stuff. Uh -huh. And, and there's, there, that whole trend, I think, is, is something to be, but you know, why, more concerned about. about stupid stuff? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to do it, but there are there are people who um, I think it really is. It's like this thing. If you're a really geeky, smart person, it kind of is a way of um, reliving age seven and in this time doing it the cool way. Maybe. Well, superiority, a pandering aspect yeah. and superiority. I'm smart. I'm so smart I can do this and laugh at it, you know. Well, Other what, people will take it seriously. Whitney, you, you were in college recently, I would imagine. Yeah. What, what did you major in in college? Literature. Okay, because I talk to kids all the time when I do mm -hmm. my little act. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very, usually what, what do you major in? Film, communications, mm -hmm. TV, radio. Yeah, it's like when I was in college, that was like the extra fun course you took. You well, know, now true. they don't take their meat and potatoes, these kids. Well, that's right. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's unacceptable. Those should not be things you can major in at universities in, in this fair country. And the fact that it is, is is shameful and awful. But that's a whole other discussion, right? I mean, yeah, it is an other. But when people think that, uh, that when they go to movies that aren't a really stupid movie, that that is culture. Whereas, again, movies should just, that no, should that's be the not supplementary movie. no, diet. No, movies are culture. Great movies are the, as good as any kind movie. of literature or anything House else. Party 3. <laughs> 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 they're, 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 they should be a supplement to books. I mean, it's just like it's like when you in school, if you read the monarch notes or the cliff notes, you should read it with the book, not in replacement of the book. Well, you should read Shakespeare and not go see the play. I mean, that doesn't necessarily wash. What are you saying? saying <laughs> <laughs> you're saying that you should read the book and, and that's a separate experience from the film. No, this guy Shakespeare you mentioned. I had yeah. to, I had to, <laughs> he's the, I, he's the Neil Simon of his day. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could uh, continue on this, but I can't because next up, if God didn't mean us to drink, how come he invented those hats with beer cans on the side?